Hi everybody, today I'm going to be building this Execure FT1S, the front wheel drive car. And this time we are going to do a project still under $399, but it's really, really an entry level closer to the $100 range. Now, this car is going to be a front wheel drive car that I'm going to be using to compete in the F series series. It's a Arnold State series in Florida. And uh, basically this class, there's no class, no front wheel drive class by itself because front wheel drive is not so popular around the Florida, but I'm going to be racing it in the US GT class with the front wheel drive car. So uh, we're going to build it just like how it is in the box test drive it and we're going to do some hopper parts and we'll see how much of a performance we'll gain from all these variety of parts I put in it. So let's check out the build. Do an open box really quick. So right off the bat, the instruction manual, just like the XQ10 and then fiberglass chassis and then Okay, back D. So all the backs just label of uh, the leather. So I gotta go through it. There you go. Oh, it comes with sway bar. Okay, that's one less option part that we need. Uh, what else is special? Hmm. Yeah, screws still come in a separate bag by itself. Uh, bearing. Oh, it comes with bearing. That's good. Some some very cheap car does not come with bearing, so this is a very good. Uh, yep, turn buckle, diff. Okay, ah, the arm mount. Well, that might be an option part that we might end up putting aluminum one later. Okay, the rest of the fiberglass stuff. And there you go. There you have it. That's all. Right off the bat, the board cup is a different color. So I know that this car is older than the XQ10. So for sure that this is uh, the old material of board cup. So let's compare it after I finish building and see how good it is compared to the XQ10. So this right away can be an upgrade, you know, like if uh, the board cup is no good, Maybe the new one from the XQ10 is good. So there you go. Let me finish building it. Okay, so all done. And do a quick ball cup test. Super free. I don't think the play is that bad. There's actually no play. Yeah, super free. So, so far these ball cup passed the test. Pretty good. Okay, so move on to the next step. Okay, so the diff is all out, already cut it out. The first thing I noticed is this is steel, so this is going to be a heavier diff for sure, by a lot, because this, the uh, XQ10 is aluminum. So the second thing is the O-ring. The O-ring is much harder and based on what I did some research on, this is going to expand and start to be really stuck in the diff. But since I'm running front wheel drive, I'm going to be putting a really thick oil in it. So I think this diff O-ring should get by for this car. But the green O-ring or the X-ring will be a good suggested upgrade if you have something for the rear. So. There you go. Uh, I gotta start building this. I get to this point, the gear is in, the other part of the gear is here. I'm gonna be using this. Holy cow, I can't even pronounce it. It is gonna be thick. It is this thick. It's almost like a clay. So, I'm going to put this in first, just like this, in here. Just to let you know, this is what came out of that jar which I'm holding now is like a clay. It's like a play-doh. 
Okay, so because of my dirty hand, I already put that piece of Play-Doh into the stuff. Okay, so if you see, it's in there. And then what I did is I put this whole four gear and the cross and push it in like this. Then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put more of this Play-Doh in here on top of this. Okay, so I just grabbed a piece of Play-Doh and did this. So now you can see, uh oh, it just fell. It's pretty hard, see, it doesn't come out. It's actually not even close to oil. Okay, so now I'm going to close it. I'm not going to be able to use the diff checker on this because it's going to be very stiff, but we're just going to close it like this and see what happens. Okay, the diff is done. And can you spin it? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I can spin it just a little bit. Yep. Can you see it? <laughs> you barely can see it move because it's really, really tight. So uh, I think once you break it in, it's going to be perfect. That's how I normally start for a front wheel drive. So there you go. So that part is done. So move on to the next part. So the next is the steering system. It looked like the X-ray one right here. No, not really, but it's plastic at least. And then we got this, the steering. It's also, of course, plastic. And then the servo mount. So yeah, just putting bearing in. Very simple stuff. Let me see how it built. Okay, so I finished the crank, of course. Actually, everything ran well, no play. Smooth. I installed my Samoa servo. Now this time I use a cheaper one. So this is the CL2. Okay, so we get to the chassis part. Holy cow! Look at the holes. Ho 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 for real. Not kidding. Man, they are ready for all different type of layout for this thing for sure. So this is the plastic bulkhead. I already cut one side off. But I just want to show you guys that you do need to cut this off. So don't cut the bottom one off. But yeah, on the top you have to cut it. So make sure you do that. Okay, so I lock it in to the Lego portion of the chassis. So then now the bulkhead is in. It's really, really rigid and tight. It's almost like the aluminum bulkhead because the way they connected it. So actually this is pretty sturdy. So uh, I don't think the aluminum bulkhead is needed at this point right now at the moment. So let's continue. Okay, so now on the pulley that on top of the diff. Oh man, I can't zoom in for some reason. Okay, so for this pulley you got to be careful where you put this ring around it. It's going in between the two E clip. So just make sure of that you don't build it wrong. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so right off the bat, once I put the upper clamp, bulkhead, whatever, to the diff, to adjust the belt, to whatever I'm doing now, the front end, the transmission portion is on and if you look at my retainer, remember I did the white marker on the point where the cam is supposed to be I have to pull it all the way back to get the belt to where I like it so uh, the stock setting on here, if you do it like how the instruction manual tell you to do uh, it is a little loose for my taste So. I did this right off the bat and I, I gotta start off with the tightest possible tension right now because it's still relatively reasonable it's still soft so that's good so let's see how it hold up okay the instruction tell me to go straight to the back so now I'm in the back and I just wanted to tell you do you see this too? Do not cut the back. The back is supposed to be connected. The front is the one that you're supposed to cut. So just make sure of that. That is uh, very important. And for the upper, I already cut this one out. It's supposed to look like this. 
and make sure you cut this and this okay so there you go that is one very very um, important where you have to pay attention look at the pictures I guess but yeah huge important okay so the bag is now done I constantly ask myself is this it and yes I forgot this is a front wheel drive car so yes it's normal that it's empty okay so move on to the next step okay so the next step was to install everything so I just go ahead and did that nothing special the servo mount is actually quite strong I really don't think I need to upgrade at all for the servo mount maybe just this part to make it nicer but yeah it's really sturdy here so it's pretty good okay let's continue okay not much I did on the last step just install the upper deck uh, I like how the screw go in like the screw go in really really slow like there you go it stops it doesn't keep going and strip out or nothing so the quality of this plastic is actually pretty good okay so let's move on okay we get to this part uh, the motor mount is aluminum so that's good the drive shaft is not so cheap to a point where they use the bone but they use a CVD it would be nice if they have double jointed but um, this is only a hundred dollar or so kit the hex is plastic which I thought is going to be aluminum so that will be for sure one of the upgrades okay so let me put this together okay so when I get to this part I build the front end the steering hub the C hub it's really smooth no sanding everything good uh, this pin does not have the set screw so you have to just force this in but the blade hold up pretty good right now no problem I get to the arm I was looking for one piece that in the instruction which is this this is like the battery stopper that goes supposedly here and I found it with the arms so okay there you go the instruction didn't say that okay so let me continue so I went ahead and put the arm together this is without any sanding and it's free it's pretty good everything go together well so far no sanding needed so very very good okay okay so the back barely legal because I had to do some movement I had to unscrew the screw a couple of times, twist it a little bit just to get it to free up but I didn't need to sand anything so this time oh, there you go there's still some stocking so a little bit of sanding required I would say in the back it's a lot of toe in though for sure around three or more maybe so yeah a uh, little bit of sanding in the way and uh, there you go okay so the rear hub nope this is not passing the test so this has to be sand this maybe this maybe and this one I didn't even put it on yet okay so I gotta do some sanding okay after some sanding there you go that is three but I have to sand a lot actually this is how much I sand oh man yeah this hub for sure needs some work for sure needs some work but it's okay now it's good let's continue so i took this time put the shock tower on and then the rest of the turn buckle it is still free no need to sand anymore and uh, everything look good there you go Okay, we get to the shock building. Uh, the O-ring of this shock is very different from the last car I built. Right here, this is the bladder. Different material. And then the cap, the shock top and bottom is really different. Uh, 
the traditional longer shock. The spring is also much longer. This is the blue, which is the softest of Express, but in the longer version of the spring, it's actually very stiff. Okay, let's get to the build. Okay, now the shock is built. It's quite smooth. Do it by one hand. Yep, quite smooth. Not bad for the plastic shocks. Pretty good. Uh, didn't run into any problem. The only one problem that I ran into the build is the collar is super hard to get threaded on correctly. So you need to be spending a little bit of time carefully, go make sure this goes straight and then everything is good. So yeah, make sure this collar goes straight, is not crooked, then you'll be all good. Okay, so let's put some oil in it. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate how to do the cap off of the shock. So first you put the bladder on, you try to use your finger, press it in, get the excess oil come out of the shock. Right there, there you go. And then you put the top cap on, and then the head, and slowly you close it, carefully. And then, uh, yeah, and the excess oil will come off the rest, right? And there you go, that, that's pretty much the process. To make sure it's tight, there you go. And then I'm gonna do a rebound test, just to make sure no air, everything good, here you go. Perfect. Okay, so now the shock is done. The oil, after I felt it, is a little, little bit on the safe side, so it's relatively heavy. It's two hole in every one with 450 weight shock oil, so it's relatively stiff. So this is going to be on the safe side, not going to be super fast, ballistic. We'll see when we try it on the track. Okay, trick of doing the sway bar first need to center this lock it down after you lock it down it is still free we're going to tighten the set screw on the left till it can't move anymore that cannot move anymore so you back out because this is tight, you see? So you back out. Yep, now and move down. There you go. So this is going to be the right spot for the left. We're gonna repeat this again. We're gonna keep moving it as you tighten it. Yep. Stop moving again. So you go back out, loosen it. Yep, there you go. So this is going to be the perfect spot for the sway bar. You see? Okay, so now the shock is still not on yet. Checking the sway bar, checking all the suspension. Everything's good. There you go. Okay, so this is after I install the motor. I end up calculating the gearing that I need. I need a 3.2. So I needed a big pin in. And you, you can see the slot still have plenty of room to go. So this motor, even at this gearing 3.2, uh, I have plenty of space left to adjust the gear mesh. And this is the stock spur from the kit, 96. So yes, it's pretty good. All right, let's move on. Okay, so due to time, I have already put the bumper together, solder up the whole wire. Oh my God, this wiring is a pain because the wire has to go all the way up front. Look at this. It was uh, super difficult and time consuming to cut, to get it into this uh, nicely done shrink wrap. But finally it's done. I really like the fan in front of the motor in the bumper. Now this 
port is a little soft I don't like that for sure need some reinforcement here and then back is okay yeah so we're ready to hit the track so we'll see how this car do now with it basically stock oh by the way I decided to go with this layout because I think this layout looked the cleanest and uh, yeah uh, let's give it a try to see how good the car is oh by the way also I finished my body also as well of course my signature color and I actually did this oh I had to do this the Sharpie job a little messed up here but it's okay it's all fixed uh, the bumper form I did it for the shock tower but on the two years and a little piece in the front so we'll see uh, how the car perform okay so we are first test driving this car and uh, this is going to be the top race of the USGT class so the car right off the bat first couple corner I feel that pretty easy to drive uh, I, right there I feel some chattering during the corner because of the CVD, the regular one. But the car is super fast. Uh, I would say I can probably go faster, but we need to check out the temperature afterward and see if uh, the motor get hot. But yeah, uh, this car is super nimble, uh, super easy to drive, go very straight. And yeah, uh, just absolutely a blast to drive. Um, very surprised from the performance of uh, this front wheel drive car. Uh, for this price uh, out of the box without any upgrade and they already have this handling so yeah very good I really liking the car hi everybody we are back at the garage and uh, came back from the Sunday Paul Spring Club race test driving the freshly built front wheel drive car and uh, the car worked out awesome uh, too much stock out of the box still and I did some shimming on the setup and changed some cameras and changed the spur and pin in and uh, I did some update on the drive shaft also as well uh, to improve the lap time so uh, yeah uh, let's go over what I did okay so let's go over what we did at Core Springs uh, while running uh, so when you see the video it was basically box stock completely and after that footage I went ahead and added some shim so I added two mil here and one mil here to get the car more rotate more rotation and then I also added a two millimeter bump steer to get more steering as well as that one mil here to get more camera gain so those are the setup changes that I did I'm running rear one degree of camber and front two degree of camber. And then I went ahead also had to modify the gearing because I feel that the motor wasn't hot, maybe because of the way the fan is. And uh, with this gearing, initially I was running at 3.2. And now with this new gearing, still super big pin in, now I go all the way down to 2.9 which is uh, quite a lot so during the final I also went ahead and did the drive shaft upgrade for this car didn't need to do it in the video you can see I as I say uh, it's chatter a little bit through the corner and I kind of didn't like that and I thought we can get a little bit better lap time without the chattering so I went ahead and upgrade to the Express double jointed CVD and those double jointed does not come with bearings so I was having a hard time finding some bearings but in the end I was able to find it it's 5x10x3 by by so I went ahead and did the hex also as well if you see the hex is now aluminum because the stock hex is plastic so every time I take off the tire the pin will come off so that was a little annoying. The back I kept plastic because the back tire I never take off. Okay, 
So hopefully we are ready for the first race of the state series. Go against all the four wheel drive. We'll see what happens. Alright, so hope you guys like the video of me building the car and test driving it. And we'll see you next time. Next time in another build.